Hi, I'm Kim Martin, and I am committed to helping women achieve their potential in both their life and their career. Hey, it's E.B. Moss, Head of Content Strategy for Media Village. This is episode 31 of Insider Insights, and it's coming out in March, which is appropriate because that means it's Women's History Month, and I'm speaking with a true role model of mine, Kim Martin. Kim is the founder of Ascendancy Group and provides coaching and guidance to female execs in the media and entertainment industry, but she's so qualified for that because previously she was Chief Strategy Officer and Chief Brand Officer at Meredith Corporation, overseeing 26 brands across all platforms. Prior to that, she was the President and GM of WeTV. She was the executive vice president for distribution and affiliate marketing for AMC Networks. And before that, she was SVP of affiliate sales for Discovery Networks. Now, Kim is also one of the most honored women in our media industry. She served on the Women in Cable and Telecommunications Board of Directors. She was also a fellow with Betsy Magnus Leadership Institute. And she was named by CableFax for five years in a row as one of the top 30 most powerful women in cable. She's a multi-channel news wonder woman. She was named to the Hollywood Reporter's top 30 in reality television list of honorees and on and on. I'll let you hear her advice from her mouth in this conversation as we get some insights from Kim Martin. I'm E.B. Moss for Media Village, which drives the business of media, marketing, and advertising forward through content by, for, and about thought leaders in ad tech and ad agencies, the audio space, and addressability, even those who are advancing diversity. So let's get some insights. One of the things that really struck me, Kim, is that I think that you must be the winningest woman in in media um, Why do you say that? <laughs> well for pete's sake i mean you've got great chops with everything from betsy magnus to wonder women to <laughs> your bio oh, you. is just so great and thank you. i guess i want to know what it takes to be an award winner i don't think anybody ever sets out to be an award winner i think that people want to be successful in their career they work smart they work hard They are team players, they have a great attitude, and they surround themselves with like-minded people. (laughs) And that is what I have done my entire career. So much of my success is a reflection of the people that I worked with. I've worked with some really smart team members. Do any of the accolades or honors really jump out at you or feel more satisfying than any other? Well, I think your first is always um, sticks with you because all of a sudden you realize you're being acknowledged for the contributions that you make. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, my gosh, people are really paying attention. That sounds like a Cowboys Field moment. It it was, you know, (laughs) because I, I think that many times we put our head down and we are focused on the results and not the acknowledgement. And to get that type of acknowledgement, particularly in the presence of, of your peers as well as your boss, the mm. senior executives at the company that you work with, it, it mm-hmm. goes a long way. That gives you that additional confidence. Is there anyone who gave you particular confidence along the way? Any mentors you want to call out? Well, I um, I have a handful of blogs that I've written on my um, my coaching site, and I have this unfortunate story that I reached out to a woman because I wanted a mentor, and she was a senior executive in the cable industry uh, and media. She ran M&A, and she was um, in financial role, and I just really admired her. I'd seen her speak numerous times. The company she worked with was one of my clients, and I asked her to be my mentor, and her response was, I did it on my own. If you're really (laughs) smart and you work hard, you will too. Um, wow. And it was such a kick in the pants, and I was mortified, embarrassed. But what I did is I walked away from it, saying to myself, I will always 
have a responsibility to pull up younger women with me. And I have been a mentor probably from that point forward. I constantly am mentoring young women, set up the mentoring program at WeTV, the mentoring program AMC Networks. I, I'm the, just the biggest proponent. And I can't say that I had one woman, but I have been fortunate to have so many women, an entire Betsy Magnus class that has been kind enough to work with me and stay in touch with me over the years. So one of my questions was going to be, what's the most valuable advice you ever received? And I would say that, um, you know, maybe the reverse <laughs> advice paid yeah. off. But was yeah. there anything uplifting that you heard along the way? You know, I have heard so many good things over the years. You know, you're only as good as the people that you hire. It's it's all about mm -hmm. making great hiring decisions and then being a great manager to your team. It's always mm -hmm. the open door, making sure that people feel connected and and have the ability to express their point of view and so that they are invested in the success of, of the projects or the work that you're doing. What year did you step away from Meredith? I left Meredith in 2017. So you saw a lot of things along the garden path there. Let's put it I did. that way. I did, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let's talk about the changes. So, you know, my first job, I worked at Discovery, and I was in a, a sales role, and I went to AMC Networks, and initially I was in a sales role, but then I moved into an operations role where I ran one of the, the networks. And um, it's one thing to be in sales and have sales goals. It's another to understand how you're running a business and how that revenue directly affects the operation of your business and how to actively manage your expenses to show a profitable business. And then at Meredith, I was actually in a strategic role. I was initially the chief strategy officer, and then I got promoted, and I was the chief brand officer overseeing 26 brands on all platforms, um, print, digital, and video. And Meredith is the last big company that I worked for, and, boy, they were really in such a conundrum in terms of trying to evolve these, all of these brands from, from print to more contemporary platforms. And they're, they're still there, but making great progress. And what's your take on the industry overall these days? Do you have um, hindsight and distance? If you could tell the head of, let's say, a major network group, something that you observe that you now have the absolute freedom to advise on, what are you seeing? What would you say? Yeah. Well, you know, the last, uh, actually all three companies that I work for are publicly traded companies, and it's so easy to get caught up in the quarterly returns and you know, making sure that you're me meeting all your financials as opposed to being able to step back and say, okay, let's look at the big picture. I'm going to be in this role for at least a couple of years. How do I step away having made a major impact for the company where it really puts them on the right path of growing their business as opposed to just focusing on quarterly results? That is probably one of the biggest mistakes that leaders make because you just get caught up in the budget conversations. That's, that's such a great point. And don't you just wish that you could say that to some people now? I do, <laughs> including my younger self. <laughs> Oh, so how does it feel now to be able to actually advise people on that? Is that is that key advice that you apply in your current role as an executive coach? It is, but I really try as a coach to help my clients come to their own solutions. Now, yes, I will nudge, and I'm asking you questions and guiding the conversation, but true change that you're going to embrace as a leader or as an employee is what you have just convinced yourself is the right path. You've come to the conclusion through in-depth research or your own reflection, because my role is not a consultant to come in and solve somebody's problems. My role as a coach is to work with my clients to help them. You had long tenures at several companies and a through line to your career. 
just talk about what it's like to transition both from a long term with one company and and what it's like to have to change into a new culture and then have to change or choose to change to an entirely different career in general. If I had this to do over again, and this is definitely advice that I give my clients, is you have to actively manage your career. And I had great experiences and success at all my previous employers, but if I had it to do over again, I actually would have been at each of them a shorter amount of time and learned as much as I could and moved on to the next opportunity. Because changing jobs is the way that you learn more. Very few people stay in a, in a role for a long period of time and are learning every single day and constant learning opportunities. And particularly in the world in which we live today with all the changes in technology, it's such a, a learning opportunity to change roles, change whether it's a role within the same company or new companies, new bosses, new colleagues. If you really are somebody who is um, committed to personal growth in terms of your career and your knowledge base, there's nothing better. And I was fortunate to do that a few times in my career. The amount I learned in Meredith in, in those two years was extremely valuable, as much as I, I probably learned in the, in the last few years of the role before, because I'd just been there for a long time. Mm. So it is, it is actively managing your career. Moving into the coaching role, I had decided after I left AMC Networks that I wanted to be a coach. I actually had had created a life plan when I was in the Betsy Magnus program. And I had said I wanted to um, eventually become a uh, an executive coach in the media entertainment industry um, for women. And when I left AMC Networks, that was the plan, and I was on the path of getting coaching certification, and I, I ended up getting the offer at Meredith. A little bit unexpected, but I felt it was such a great opportunity. I took it, and I had a great couple of years there but when I ended up leaving I came back to coaching because this had been my plan you might have been taking notes already but now you're really going to want to get your pen out I asked Kim about some of the specific takeaways and things that we should note about actively managing our careers I would say number one you have to actively manage your career I would say that most women are not doing that they have great jobs they love and they stay there, and they are not the ones who are necessarily going in and asking for promotions or looking for other opportunities in the company. They think that somebody is going to come to them, or they end up looking for an opportunity when they're unhappy. Number two, always have a boss that respects you and you have a good working relationship with. I think that that is so crucial once um, you're not in a good place with your boss it's tough to give 110%. Number three, I would say work in an industry that you're passionate about. I'd love to say work in a role that you're passionate about, but sometimes you you end up doing a spin on a role that maybe is not uh, your top choice, but it's a great learning opportunity for you. And you want to be in the right industry because if you're in the right industry and you get the right experience, you'll eventually find the right role for you. Even if you don't have that great boss, even if you don't have that great role, you have got to have a good attitude because people will know you for that more than anything. Any kind of resume, LinkedIn, job oh. searching kind of specific thing? Yes, I have four or five that I always tell people, anybody who is actively managing their career, number one, you have to have a fantastic resume. And I encourage people to get a professional resume writer particularly by the time you're like at mid-level in your career. Number two, you've got to have an amazing headshot that presents you as the next level, the level that you would be interviewing for. Number three, it is an extremely strong LinkedIn profile. No one is hired today without somebody looking at their LinkedIn profile. Number four, you have to have 30 seconds of me. It is your elevator pitch that wows people. So that in 30 seconds, you can tell people who you are and a little bit about yourself or your best skill set. It doesn't mean I'm Kim Martin, executive coach at Ascendancy Group. Instead, it's, hi, I'm Kim Martin, 
and I am committed to helping women achieve their potential in both their life and their career. And then the last thing is you have to have a database, a database of your entire network, and you actively manage that database. You reach out to everybody at least once a year. In terms of takeaways, it's probably one of the best things to share with women. I'm E.B. Moss, and you've been listening to Insider Insights from Media Village. Check us out at mediavillage.com, and I hope that you'll subscribe to Insider Insights wherever you listen to podcasts.